Hi guys, it's Crypto Burp, Adrian speaking. Welcome to today's Friday webinar. Well, this has been quite a confusing week for so many traders, while equities actually have been taking a strong hit to the downside, pulling Bitcoin below, right behind it. And also, this definitely adds a lot of uncertainty for the altcoin traders. So we're going to have a look at all of these things combined, going to start off with a market summary for the legacy traditional financial markets and how it all translates to Bitcoin's price action. And we're going to discuss the levels that Bitcoin needs to hold in order to continue with any chances for the upward passes. If you guys are ready to hear more, make sure you stay tuned. We're going there right in a second. Hi, everybody. I uh, hope you guys are doing okay. Checking for my mic, checking for everything. If it all works, let me know if you can hear me fine, see me fine, guys. Hopefully, it is the case right now because, uh, well, you know, I'm supposed to squeeze in as much information as I can efficiently and effectively throughout the next 20, 30 minutes for you to get some main takeaways, get some more information. Hi to everybody in the chat. Let me know kindly how you guys are doing today. If you are safe, if you are okay after this very recent crashes all, all across the board. It's not been easy. It's been actually very hard and difficult to tune in and trade in. Uh, well, on those recent market conditions, there's a lot of dark clouds, a lot of uh, a lot of you know unpromising, unpromising environment to profitable trading because the market is lacking trend, right? So let's actually give it a go and see you right into it. Are there any important news, uh, the financial news pieces for, for today? Well, we had recently had uh, well, the talk from, from Jay Powell, of course, you know, and there's been usually just like they say, <laughs> little to no really said, uh, only kind of like, you know, information that they share is typically, you know, and how to avoid answering the very questions. This is what politicians usually do. So there is, of course, a lot of uncertainty. There is still lots of fears of the inflation. Uh, there is still, of course, a lot of fear of the increasing inflation, which keeps increasing. It doesn't seem to be slowing down efficiently or effectively or fast enough, as fast as they perhaps could imagine or would wish for it, you know, which, of course, poses Pose, poses a question for you know for the future of the rate hikes and whether or not there is going to be stronger or tighter um, you know even even more tighter uh, policy application if you will uh, well this is of course generating a lot of uncertainty a lot of risk off environment while overall the cash has been the king right so let's actually give it a go you know uh, well and give it give it a check. You know, because very recently Bitcoin has given the the reading for the worst market sentiment reading uh, and over, well, basically, you know, since COVID crash, right? We we quickly tapped uh, the area of eight points on the Fear and Greed Index scale historical levels, which are very rarely tagged, right? And this is exactly what made me recently add to my Bitcoin positions in the anticipation of potential reversal. Right. There is, of course, no way to know future for sure. But I know uh, that, well, at least from my experience, a lot, for, at least from the historical records, usually buying into extreme fear has brought uh, much more profitable results and much better returns than selling into extreme fear. Panic selling rarely ever pays off. Uh, panic buying when everybody is selling, perhaps maybe a better strategy for some, especially those who favor contrarian trading. You know, so the sentiment is at these lows. Uh, in terms of the market financial readings, you know, we are looking at, of course, very, very much of the uh, deterioration on the of the Dow, Dow Jones Industrial Average. The industrial stocks actually are not really doing well as of today. You know, uh, tagging the area, breaking the support through like at the thirty-one twelve. Uh, 31 to 50 you know after breaking that yesterday we we see, we've just seen another follow through to the downside and another breakout which still lasts remember there is still three four hour sessions uh three four hours left of the, of the session so there are still chances you know to see some different price action done so far but more often than not if the market had opened you know uh well opened with a with a negative kind of like is you know tendency 
typically, and it said, you know, that the opening price has a very strong chances of being the, the high and the low or the low for the markets, historically speaking, right? So whenever there is an open, uh, there is the highest chances, the highest probability for B, for it, for this open to be the maximum or the minimum level if the market is bearish or bullish accordingly. Uh, look, having a quick look, of course, at the, well, at the consumer discretionary, at the more, uh, more you know, defensive, uh, defensive stocks. Defensive stocks have been actually taking it down, uh, downwards pressure, lots of downwards pressure on the consumer staples as well after a very decent price action and uh, and a follow with a lot of bullish follow through to the upside throughout March to April, March through April, and actually marking the peak in the mid April. You know, we've been seeing nothing but a very strong sell off, and you can tell that the market basically not only reverted back to where to where it was before the ma massive pump, but it actually slashed down. So healthcare, of course, is also trading low. Financials are trading even lower. Energy is actually the one, uh, the one market that is holding very well. You know, for the energy sector stocks, you're looking at now ETFs mainly. You know, having the elevated prices due to the energy crisis, due to the energy um, oil prices, natural gas prices coming from the Russia-Ukraine war, and uh, also well beyond that. Industrials are doing really not so well basic materials also not doing really well technology is taking a hit uh and ever hit to the downside utilities are also kind of like seeming to be you know to be trading this local consolidation period following this recent rapid sell-off so it makes much more sense to anticipate another instance of a sell-off on the market as the market fails to reclaim you know important relevant levels so far the way I'm looking at it, real estate is rarely ever doing well in the you know rate hiking cycle due to the rate uh, hike policy, which basically you know promotes higher interest rates, so higher costs of borrowing. So the borrowing is not really the best favorable option for so many different real estate developers. So typically the real estate market takes a, takes a hit with this, right? So communication also down. So if you have a look, then even you know basically the the, the least uh, the least sinking, you know, market is the energy side, right? While well, still in the red, all the markets are in the red. This does not really add a lot of bullish favors for cryptocurrencies as a as a result. We are looking at a potential, you know, local retracement uh, recovery uh, coming for the 30-year bond prices, right? So the 30-year bond prices so far to me are looking as if they wanted to kind of like get a get a local relief bounce perhaps into the 144 145 region uh to this 50-day moving average right there are chances for it but i will need to see a proper reclaim there is some uh you know potential head and shoulders pattern forming but it needs a proper reclaim over the neckline right in order to promote any any new trend environment let me know guys if so far the sound is okay if i can continue if you're catching up well uh also kind of reminder that if you guys are watching that on youtube make sure you hit a subscribe button as well get the notification bell on and hit the likes and actually leave some kind comments because i'll do my best if you have any questions i'll do my best to actually cover some of them either through the show or after the show ends so having a look at the bond prices, like I said, you know, I'm seeing this potential short term relief, but I would not really bet it um, bet on the long term reversal. You can tell that the 200 day average, the long term average is actually clearly sloping down and it's accelerating to the down. So you can tell that by the actual decreasing, uh, increasing deviation against the longer term average uh, with, or, or should I say presented by the shorter term averages. This is typically a sign of bearish momentum. Uh, strong to the downside accelerating so you know I, I don't see much of chances of really a healthy retracement all the way to 155 you know bullish bullish bond prices typically you know historically were more in favor of the stock prices as well increasing so uh, we'll see how it goes but I'm not really seeing anything major spectacular other than a short-term relief bounce remember this is a strong downward trend and at the same time we are looking at the 30-year bond yields 30-year yields or even 10-year t-note bill um 10 out you know yields 10-year yields are also breaking above its 42-year long downward trend 
42 year long downwards trend has just been broken to the down to the upside very recently right so it definitely promotes an instance uh in of, of yields increasing while bond prices would of course take a hit down uh due to the inverse correlation and inverse relate inverse relationship see and admire this very big strength of the of the yields right as the increase basically doubled almost doubled ever since december you know for the past six months this is this is quite a spectacular case and uh well and of course and of course by all means you know the crb which is the uh, uh, commodity research bureau index for the commodities you know is still trading very high also uh you know despite local despite local uh local momentum slow then you can tell that this difference that the differences between the sh short term and longer term average has actually decreased which tells me that the momentum is slowing down the upwards pressure is slowing down uh, this brings chances of potential reversal, at least for the short term, in the form of this barely upsloping movement, consolidative kind of like vibe. But again, this is a very strong upwards trend. So I would not be, you know, I would be nowhere near ready to short such a strong upwards trend, same for the yields. Metals, silver, gold, silver ETF, you know, gold prices, silver prices are seeing somewhat of an upwards uh, recovery today, but overall steady decline ever since uh, mid-April peak. Well, and having looked at cryptos, of course, you know we're going to see it in the details. But some local consolidation, as I referred to it, a PTSD market environment uh, after after this recent crash on the Luna side, which where Marfilo actually acted very strongly and significantly, and that's what I was saying. You know, the dollar. Has been showing very significant strength across the globe the cash has been the kink and when the recession kicks in and we had recently got the confirmation for the potential recession as in the inverted yield curves where the short-term -term yields were actually paying better and more than the longer-term yields which is typical case of unhealthy economy and econ economy that tumbles that struggles that deteriorates over the time this could potentially lead again to a lot of markets continuing to collapse uh, continuing trending downwards while the cash would be actually piling, piling up. And you can tell the dollar is actually very strong, not, all, not only because of the very strong continuation pattern that follow through to the upside, but locally, locally less, and except for this local fake out that you had had uh, and the potential first, close, first instance of closing below the shorter term mean, you can still tell that this mean is actually very highly deviated. The momentum is strong. The upwards pressure is strong. So I would not bet against dollar right now. You can tell that this, you know, this potential, again, situation where you get the retracement towards like that, you know, 101 uh, point on the index, uh, the dollar index. You know, I would argue that this is rather uh, and more likely than not a short term retracement rather than a long term reversal. OK, so uh, there seems to be overall, just like I put it in the recent market report for the traditional traditional markets for the exclusive members of the Burm Nest. Um, you know, we are looking at the inflection points actually pending. There are a lot of markets which are which have come to their extreme places to the over stretched overextended market trends which are likely to get some short-term changes short-term reversals those inflection points of course are the extreme uh cases of risk of betting wrongly against the system uh of course bitcoin is actually going to be the next focus for the markets right right after i get you some uh quick understanding about uh the the the, the specific index for the comp for the stocks the composite index as well as the large cap index uh, S and P 500. The reason I'm showing you this is because there has been nothing but an extremely historically strong correlation between Bitcoin prices and equity prices in terms of composite index and the S and P 500. There has been historical high correlation in terms of the direction. So, in order to get the feeling of where BTC might be heading, you really want to keep monitoring and observing equities, especially S and P 500 and composite index, as those refer. Uh, to Bitcoin with the strongest correlation coefficient, which is going to be apparent. As you can tell, there has been a lot of weakness, a lot of uncertainty, a lot of weakness, uh, you know, for, with the market. You know, there's been lots of rejections, lots of failures to break and reclaim certain levels. 50-day uh, average, a 20-day moving average, the simple moving average, the blue curve. 
on the left side of the chart, composite index were, were was actually rejected, right? This local resistance has acted um, well, very you know gave a very strong market reaction off to the downside, uh, with uh, actually new low printing throughout the day. So the weekly has not been the most uh, bullish candle if you turn it on the weekly chart. And here, you know, it's perhaps even more even more apparent for how strong the rejection has been for the S&P 500, the 4100 support, uh, well, which was broken, turned into a resistance. So the polarity change principle has acted very well here, rejecting the market and actually console, uh, continuing to sell off uh, to the new lows. This is not necessarily the most bullish instance for S&P 500, which, like I've just said, brings a very strong correlation and a very strong kind of like a suppression, very suppression to supply side of the market activated on the Bitcoin side of the things, right? So here is the chart as I was referring to it, you know, with a historically high correlation. This is on the bottom, the correlation coefficient between Bitcoin and S&P 500. So the fact that it is actually trading at 0.94 on the seven week basis it tells you, and this is a weekly chart, it tells you that Bitcoin is historically highly correlated with the S&P 500, right? So it basically does what S&P 500 does. Uh, because S&P 500 is really, you know, taking a pound downwards, Bitcoin is more likely than not be suppressed uh, by the bullish, by the bearish side of the market, by the bears, right? We have recently seen, we have recently seen, of course, the... Uh, deterioration, or I should I say that the breach for the major support. However, this major support at around 28,800s, despite getting breached toward 25, 25.4, okay, you know, it's closed in a form of this pin bar candle, pin bar uh, pattern, where actually, you know, whenever there is an open, uh, there is an open and a close on the pin bar, this represents also a candlestick body to an extent which is in the distance 31 percent of the entire total candle range right so the candle body actually contains 31 percent of the entire week price action and typically this is a name and, and and a clear correspondence to a bullish hammer uh candlestick which on the weekly time frame is more important than not so this potentially also brings you know this fake out scenario uh, combined with a bullish hammer with extremely oversold market on the weekly time frame, arguably bringing chances for at least a short-term upwards reversal. Eventually, the 50-week average, which is the main curve here, the main black curve, you know, uh, there is a thing in a trading, an entire trading strategy system that actually uh, relies on a phenomenon called mean reversion, right? The mean reversion or a momentum trading or a trading range, uh, well, investing basically implies or relies on the fact that the prices tend to oscillate around their mean values, around their mean average prices. So when there is a mean, let me actually show it to you. When there is a mean price, uh, you know, at this moment, right? When there is a mean price, it means that at, at one point, the prices are going to trend outside it to the upside and below it. Right. So but as long as the moverage keeps climbing up, actually, this has the tendency of increasing upsloping environment tendency. Uh, and the fact that the mean reversion actually works and has always worked because this is this stems from the statistical nature of the price action data price time series data that the price action is. Uh, is basically that at one point, I have no idea when I'm not going to tell you a date. I'm not going to tell you a specific point in the calendar because I don't have a crystal ball. But at one point, I know that Bitcoin should be trading back at its fair mean value, which is 44.5 uh, approximately, right? So 44.500 is approximately the 50-week average price of Bitcoin, the one-year-long price of Bitcoin almost, right? So it's heavily deviated to the downside below it. And eventually, more often than not, and more likely than not, and sooner than later, it's supposed to be trading back at its fair mean 50-week value, right? This is also something to consider uh, as, you know, as a, as a the, heavier the, the heavier the deviation goes to the upside, the bigger the chances for the reversal, right? So the trend faders, uh, fading the trend may actually become, you know, profitable 
In the same way, the fatter it's deviated to the downside, the more chances for the reversal to the upside it has. And besides, there is a statistical, uh, there is a statistical, you know, nature of the markets in terms of the probability. There is a thing called theory of runs, which basically says that if the if the price action is, you know, almost if you assume that the price action is random, let's say, especially in the lower time frames where you get a lot of noise, a lot of choppy oscillations with no sense, with no consequence, you know, the direction, you could actually run, uh, well, get a run of, of losses, uh, get well, run of losses for Bitcoin as in the bearish candlesticks. And it tells you that, uh, you know, as you go, uh, and the, the more candle bearish candlesticks in the sequence, the more the less likely, the more unlikely it becomes for the Bitcoin to continue trending in this direction, right? So the stronger downwards trend, it actually uh, been showed the higher the chances, the closer to the reversal we are, okay? This is something to be considered for sure. And back to the chart, you know, I want to show you this, uh, well, this this 200 day, 200 uh, week moving average, actually, let's Let's show it here. 200 week moving average, right? Uh, there is, of course, some distance to it. In worst case, I'm not saying it's impossible because that, you know, the long term kind of like a support has been breached, which showed definitely a lot of local weakness. Uh, but, you know, as long as we see a candle close for the week somewhere higher in the in the upper range rather than closing below the twenty five thousand dollars, you know, I see some local consolidation with chances of an upwards pullback. But if you actually see otherwise the $25,000 bridge support, you know, then there is high chances we are actually getting to retest, getting the retest of a 200 week average, which is somewhere around $21,000, $22,000, which is not this far. And if I were to give you the percentages, it's actually somewhere around like 23%. Of course, it's going to be very painful. Uh, so that's something that we need to be ready. This is the main support, uh, especially if there are some price shocks coming from exogenous signals, exogenous sides of the market, it's something that you cannot predict. The charts, the technical analysis chart is not going to tell you when there is another invasion, you know, in another country from Putin's side. There is another, there is no way that the charts are going to tell you when there is, you know, another opening, a new chapter to the Russian-Ukraine war, right? You don't know when an asteroid crashes into Earth uh, using Bitcoin chart. So situations like that cannot be predicted. Those black swans cannot be predicted. And uh, if such a black swan occurs, there is a monkeypox, you know, just, just a new new trend after after the COVID pandemic. There is a new trend bursting out of nowhere, you know. So uh, you get another black swan and we may find ourselves trading with Bitcoin around $22,000. But overall, overall, you know, if we get and apply the main key levels, uh, other key levels for Bitcoin, and knowing that $21,000, $22,000 is the main key level for Bitcoin uh, in case we fail to hold $25,000 and it is all conditional, then we can trigger easily the Barbicator Pro uh, measures on my 12-hour chart, my favorite chart, and actually get rid of the moving average to get the most rely reliable and realistic readings of the market, right? So let's actually get uh, the... Let's get the baseline bands. Let's get the current time for trailer, okay? Which is all going to tell us the main story. And uh, well, if we are, let's get to proper refresh it. Will it catch up? Oh, I think it didn't save for some reason. Let's trigger it one again, one more time. Okay. Um, Quick current time frame trailer, which is the main breakout system that I use, the trend following breakout system. Let's actually get the this uh, the the level lines and the baseline bands to search for the volatility and momentum side of the things. So we can clearly tell, okay, there is a whole conjunction of levels that are the most relevant for Bitcoin. You can tell that the momentum bands, which are actually showing you the momentum, um, the wider they get, the stronger the momentum, and at the same time showing you the volatility of the market volatility is a risk okay measure in finance then you're looking at the potential range of prices okay between the extreme high and extreme low of the bands so potentially there is a chance for a resistance at around forty thousand dollars and a support at around twenty five thousand dollars right you don't want to get a proper breakout 
outside or to the downside through these bands, if you actually do get it, then there are chances to continue higher, uh, continue further to the downside into the $21, $22,000 support. In case you don't get such an option and we continue trading towards, you know, uh, towards this current time frame trailer stop, I would argue, I would argue that there are there are chances for us visiting into higher levels of Bitcoin. If we turn it on for my favorite time frame, which is 12 hour chart, okay, you're looking there is an attempt of uh well of a retest at the current local support. It's definitely not the most favorable price action to look out for the date. Uh, but it's you know it not all not all is lost because basically the regular volatility for bitcoins is set somewhere around thirty five thousand dollars and uh, twenty six thousand dollars. So thirty five to twenty six is the level that is considered quote unquote healthy for bitcoin. Okay, healthy means that this is some regular volatility going on and a and a breach, an abnormal volatility burst uh, to the upside. Right or to the downside will likely result in the continuation of the breakout should the candle close this way. So we see a breakout outside the current time frame trailer or better the momentum band here over thirty-five thousand dollars, right? Uh, and you get likely upwards continuation into thirty-six five seven seven, which is the next resistance. Uh, potentially, if this one is broken towards the forty thousand dollar, which is the next resistance. If this gets broken and reclaimed towards the next. Uh, kind of like you know staircase upwards and uh, 42 mid 40 42 thousands and higher above if this continues in this direction right otherwise we do have the chances see a daily close below 28 500 and i would argue we may see a retest of twenty six thousand dollars. this is likely and it's still going to be within the regular volatility OK, so you want to see Bitcoin hold another crucial and essential level outside twenty one thousand dollars, which or twenty two thousand dollars on the 200, 200 week average, which would likely come if you see a bridge. Uh, well, through twenty six thousand dollars based on the volatility and ugly close below would likely lead there. But until you see that or unless you see that, I would argue Bitcoin continues to chop around, you know, within this volatility zone uh, given and defined by the volatility bands, by the momentum bands there. Okay, other than this, finally, I want to get you an update about altcoins and DeFi. Well, this is a chart I use uh, for comparing comparison of the Bitcoin price action, the DeFi market cap and altcoins total market cap. You can clearly tell there is declining tendency, of course, especially after Luna and UST crash. So there is little to no safety in the market. The stocks are not helping at all. Uh, a lot of weakness. Although remember that we are at historical level, uh, historical support levels. Of course, you know, technical analysis does not apply ideally or literally in the market cap in the total market capitalization because this is not a tradable chart you cannot trade that and mainly technical analysis works because we make it work because we tend to see the same patterns okay we cause it to be make it to be uh well a self-fulfilling prophecy and just because many people see the same patterns more likely than not they are going to behave in somewhat an expected way uh, so all the things concerned, I see a lot of weakness, a lot of weakness dictated by equities, which translates to weakness in Bitcoin, which translates later to, to weakness in DeFi and in altcoins as a as a whole uh, class, right? So I would not, you know, to, to, to get you at the main conclusion, I would definitely not uh, increase just yet my positions in altcoins. I have not been increasing my positions in altcoins. I have only increased my position on Bitcoin, I've added $150,000 worth of Bitcoin uh, on the recent, uh, recent, can't remember when, when the day was, uh, three, four days ago, maybe. Now, I've recently also added a long-term uh, small leverage position, uh, which I intend to hold for quite some time, just like recently I had held one for over a year, for over a year. Okay, so uh, all the things concerned, guys, I know there are some questions, um, I don't think I will be able to answer many of them, but I promise I'll do my best to actually go through them uh, on the YouTube side of the thing. So if you're watching that on YouTube, make sure you leave the comment and leave the question that you want me to answer, and I'll do my best to answer that. 
And also remember to hit the subscribe button, smash the likes, hit the notification bells so that you stay notified whenever we issue new updates on the markets and they do arrive each and every single day for you guys, free of any charge. And speaking of free of charge, we have a free trial for our exclusive membership in the Burbness, which exists since 2017. And we're likely one of the largest communities of this kind. Uh, and there is so many success uh, episodes, so many success instances. Uh, we've just got another brand new team member, BC Richfield, officially approved in the team, successfully um, closing on his probation period. Uh, so this is also a huge congratulation to him. Uh, so you know, keep him definitely in your thoughts. Make make sure you applaud him. You applaud him. A uh, round of applause is definitely very much appreciated for him. And lots of success, lots of care, 24-7 support to aid your trading, uh, trading thoughts, trading decisions. Hear our comments, hear our thoughts, hear how, uh, how much you can actually gain and save time, save time and save yourself from expect ex expensive losses. And it's all free seven days. If you guys want it, you go to the burbness.com, go literally at any button uh, here, or here, this is sign up free button, go for it. Uh, put in your email address, put in your name, and it's going to all come into your right into your mailbox. box. With very simple instructions and in over one minute, as as long, as short as one minute, you'll all be set. And I see you guys with your questions, with all your questions in the Burb Nest. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, make sure you hit a subscribe. Again, hit a notification bell, leave your questions, and I see you guys in the Burb Nest. Got all. Bless you all. Bye-bye.